clinical question for the search heavy trial was to find out how people with symptomatic spheroidal stenosis did versus surgery in people that were intermediate risk for surgery since we had already answered the question for high risk and extreme risk. We randomized over 1,742 patients. The people that we enrolled in the search heavy trial were intermediate risk and the definition for intermediate risk was that the heart team felt that their surgical operative mortality would be between 3 and 15 percent based on both their STS predicted risk of mortality and their clinical status which included frailty, disability, and comorbidities. When we look at the demographics of the search heavy group, these were an elderly group. They're almost 80 years old. The STS for TAVR was 4.4 and 4.5 for surgery. The primary endpoint was all-cause mortality or disabling stroke at two years. And what we found is that when we reached two years, the all-cause mortality or disabling stroke for, for TAVR was, I, I believe, 12.4 and for surgery was 14. In addition, at 30 days, there was statistically less stroke, statistically less transfusion, statistically less kidney injury, statistically less cardiogenic shock, and statistically less atrial fibrillation in the TAVR group. There's still more perivalvular leak for TAVR than there is for surgery. There was 5% versus 1%. But remember, 84% of this trial was done with the first generation core valve. Only 16% were done with the new Evolute R, which has a lower perivalvular leak rate. Pacemakers, pacemakers were higher than we expected in this trial, but again, only 16% were Evolute R. We know from our data from Europe and our data from the U.S. that the, the pacemaker rate in Evolute R has been lower than, than it is in the, uh, in the core valve classic. We'd expect it to be about 13%. So these people did well at two years, and they did really well at one month with faster recovery. This is all really good news for those interested in the TAVR field.